So this is a very serious topic that I'm super surprised we have never discussed here at Gamer Heaven. What are the actual effects of video games on the human brain? Does it make you smarter? Does it make you dumber? Does it affect your cognitive abilities, your problem solving abilities? Does it give you social anxiety? Does it make you not motivated to want to go out in the world and be productive? And let's talk a little bit about video game addiction as well. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, so this is a topic that is very near and dear to my rear as somebody that has been an avid gamer since I was five years old and I'm about to be turning 32 in about two weeks. Now I have researched this topic extensively and this is something that I feel comfortable talking to you guys, the stallions and stallionettes, my viewership, my subscribers, or maybe you're not subscribed, you should probably remedy that. You're doing something wrong if you're not trotting around the stable because I think a lot of you guys probably feel the same way I do about video games and its effect on the human brain or some of you might not even think about the psychological effects of video gaming, period. Now I do, but primarily only when I see some kind of article, like the one that I'm going to share, right? Pull that up to my top monitor here, like this one right here. What does gaming do to your brain and how you might benefit? This will be linked, cited, sourced in the description below. But I hear quite frequently these articles from boomer outlets and whatnot, throwing out these common misconceptions that video games either make the youth of America extremely violent, which by the way has been debunked through several studies, or that playing video games makes people dumb or lazy. So first of all, let's get the elephant out of the way. Let's grab him by the trunk and make sure he's satisfied. Does playing video games make you stupid, dumb, morose, ignorant, a moron? Did I already say moron? I don't think so. Uh, I said morose, basically the same thing. Uh, are you a big dumb dummy because you like to put a controller or a mouse in your hand when you get home from work or school? Absolutely not. In fact, quite the opposite. Now the term vegging out on the couch comes from people watching television or movies where you literally come home, you're exhausted, you don't want to do shit, you plop in your couch, you're lazy boy, kick your feet out. <laughs> and you do absolutely nothing to stimulate your brain. You basically shut off and you're basically a vegetable, like a mentally handicapped vegetable, just absorbing content. Not that there's anything wrong with watching movies, watching Netflix, watching YouTube, watching Twitch, whatever. But when you are playing a video game, when you are actively playing a video game, you are actively engaging your brain cells. You're pumping neurons because you are doing a couple of the following things here. One, hand-eye coordination. Even though you're relaxing, you're not working out or anything, maybe you're playing Wii, that's kind of a workout, but you're just playing a video game with a controller, right? You're still exercising hand-eye coordination, making sure that what you see on screen is reflective of what's happening in your hands. Secondly, there were studies that show that gamers versus people that have not played video games are better at simple problem solving. Besides strategy games and whatnot, even action adventure games will throw like Uncharted or Tomb Raider in there. There's a lot of puzzles you have to solve to keep progressing through the game. So you get used to problem solving. Not to mention there's a lot of dialogue choices in the, a lot of these games. For example, Mass Effect or the Walking Dead Telltale series. You, your choices, your dialogue, the decisions that you make literally form the script of the story and how the rest of the NPCs or non-player characters of the game world perceive your character. Do they hate you? Do they love you? Maybe an entire planet hates you because of something you've done. So all these interactions, even though they're digital interactions, they're not face to face or tush to tush, nip to nip, tip to tits, uh, even though they're in the game world, you are still utilizing social functions by figuring out, hmm, how would I get through this dialogue? How would I manipulate this conversation? Or how would I, um, you know, find out the information that I want? Maybe you're playing L.A. Noir, where you're a detective and you're trying to get information out of somebody and you're watching their facial cues. Oh, his lip quivered. He might be lying. I investigated his wife and he said that he's never worn that brown jacket on Tuesdays. He wears his brown pants because he's shit in his pants because Gamer Heaven made a new video. So I would argue that not only does playing video games not make you dumb or stupid, it actually makes you more intelligent than if you just were to come home and watch um, stagnant static media like movies or television. 
But let me caveat that by saying it has to be in moderation. Now let's talk a little bit about video game addiction because you get this instantaneous hit of satisfaction, visual auditory stimulation, this dopamine hit. Uh, for example, that article mentioned Fortnite. Fortnite is inherently designed to stimulate young minds. It has these bright, vibrant colors. It's a battle royale. So you're dropping in onto an island. There's a shitload of action going on on screen and you can build massive structures within a, a couple of seconds. So you're basically changing the layout out of the map and everything. It's just designed to be a very stimulating game. That's why it's been the second most popular game uh, in the world for the longest time behind Minecraft. Say what you will about Fortnite. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, that's a kid's game or that's stupid or you got a small peen if you play that game. That's great, but it's still the second most popular game in the world for a reason. It is very stimulating visually, auditorily. That's not a real word, is it? auditorily. See, there's that, that gamer brain, that, that mushroom brain that the boomers think we got. Stimulation of the senses. Sight. Sound. Touch from the controller vibrating, maybe? Maybe smell. You know, your console's on fire because it's overclocked or something. You get that whiff of, of burning plastic. It's uh, scent, scent receptor stimulation as well. So these games are obviously designed to grab your attention. But if that's all you're doing, if you're ignoring going out and playing, if you're ignoring uh, your your body, exercising, you're ignoring your your mental health, working on yourself, you know, reading books, you know, feeding your book smarts, your knowledge that way. If you're not getting out and socializing, if you're not seeing the sun, that is when you are stepping into the territory, the threshold of game addiction. And that is a problem. That is a genuine problem, but that's not video game specific. There's addiction to masturbation. There's addiction to food, gluttony, overeating when you already know you're full. There's addiction to drugs, alcohol, all kinds of stuff that, in my opinion, is more dangerous to the mind and body than video games. Because like I said, even though you might be addicted and you're spending way too much time playing these games, you're still, in essence, staying the same intelligence level or getting smarter because like I said, you're constantly working on hand-eye coordination, problem solving, strategy, somewhat of social skills with the dialogue and stuff. And also if playing video games is affecting you at your job, or you're about to get fired, or you are complacent at a job that you are unhappy with and what's keeping you from going out and building your resume out, going to interviews and getting a better job is the fact that you're constantly locked into your game console or PC. That is an issue as well. However, I do constantly hear this, this argument and it's generally from either boomers or people that just don't play video games or understand shit about them. Jesus Christ, the fucking mailman's dropping off a package and it sounds like they got a, a full exhaust system on their their post truck. Like Paul Walker installed this bad boy. God rest him. So with addiction, how do you break the cycle? Well, as with any addiction, it's kind of hard to quit cold turkey. Just put down your controller, take the batteries out and never touch it again. However, what you should do is start setting yourself time limits. So I'm gonna game for two hours tonight. Okay, well, I need to spend some time with my wife and kids. Okay, well, I'm working on a project for work. Okay, I'm uh, working on a project because I just started a YouTube channel, a barbecue YouTube channel. I got to shoot some content, some footage. Okay, so you cut that down to an hour and 30 minutes. Basically, it gets to the point to where gaming is no longer a hindrance on your life, but something that you do to relax, which is exactly what it should be. It should be fun and enjoyable. It should never feel like you're addicted or like you have to do it to get that hit of dopamine that you crave. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can look me right in the brown eye. This lighting makes it look like I have no color in my eyes, like they're just black. The cold, dead eyes of a shark, whatever. Jon Snow had black corneas and he was a handsome man, so fuck it. And another argument that I hear a lot of times is that playing video games is a waste of time time that you could be being productive and helping yourself grow mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, whatever. Mm. What's the difference between that playing video games and watching TV or movies? I'll tell you what the difference is. You're still actively doing something when you're playing video games. You're still working on those mental skills, sharpening the blade, so to speak. You know what I mean? Instead of watching movies and TV where you get butter knife brain, you got a, a, a sharp machete for a brain. Uh, it being a waste of time, there are many, many, many ways you can actually get paid to game nowadays. You could be a game tester. You could be a streamer. You could be a YouTuber. You could be a beta tester. You could be a game designer. If you enjoy video games, to the point to where it's all you really want to do. There are careers out there. You could work for a third party game development studio. You could apply for a first party studio like Sony Interactive or Microsoft Studios. And there's a shitload of subsidiary studios like Bethesda. And a lot of people, I hate to keep throwing the word boomer around, but a lot of these 
old timers, these Elden folks, don't understand how lucrative it is nowadays with the opportunities that we have available for us with the internet, whether you're in North America, Canada, Australia, UK, anywhere where the internet's prevalent and that is a popular business model for you to be able to leverage that and reach more people. For example, I only have 20,000 subscribers on this channel, but I make enough income from YouTube every month between Google AdSense ads, my Amazon associate links, all other third party uh, affiliate market programs that I'm part of, free stuff getting sent out to me that I can literally pay all of my monthly bills, my mortgage, my car payment, my car insurance, my groceries, my utilities. Now, is that all I do? Absolutely not, because I'm the kind of person that doesn't believe you should only have one stream of income. You should have a pillar, not a three-legged stool of income. You should have a Parthenon. You know, using big words here, and I'm an avid gamer. Maybe I am a little slow. I don't know, but I don't feel like it. I feel pretty crisp. So am I saying that's all you should do is just play video games all the time? No, you obviously need to make sure you have a work-life balance. And if gaming is your work, you're a professional esports athlete, maybe you're on FaZe Clan, maybe you're one of the hottest first person shooters on the scene. So that's your job, which is cool because you're getting to play video games and get paid for it. But then you still need to have a work-life balance. When you turn off the work switch, stop gaming and come over here and spend time with your family, don't be playing on your phone. Don't be talking about work and stuff like that. Spend quality time with your loved ones and make sure that you are taking quality time for yourself to help yourself grow, work on self-betterment, self-development in all aspects of your life, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, social. And also something that I think is becoming more evident and prevalent in society is that video games are a lot more mainstream. They are kind of the norm now. The majority of people play video games. Video games are the largest media industry. They earn more yearly or annual income than movies, books, music, or television by a fair margin. I have covered this topic in the past. The video game industry earns millions of dollars more. And think about that, down that chain, down that totem pole, there's people getting paid along the way too. So obviously people are making careers from gaming. So again, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about for multiple reasons. I myself am a gamer. I have a gaming YouTube channel, which I am savagely passionate about. And one of my primary goals in life is to grow this into a a thick, veiny, girthy boy. So when I hear social misconceptions being tossed around, like, oh, video games are a waste of time, or that makes you stupid, like, you know, and, and there's certain takes that make sense. Like, for example, Joe Rogan says he just simply can't play games. He doesn't batter people that, bat that play games. He doesn't bash them verbally. He says that he can't play them because he enjoys them too much. He has an addictive personality. And when it comes to video games, they're too, they, they grab them too much. He's like, I, I can't, I can't do the video games. It's funny how he words it. I, I like, <laughs> I can't do the video games. Um, you know, he said that during one of his podcasts and he's actually mentioned it during multiple podcasts. And the one that I'm referring to recently, he just explained that it's too much of a dopamine hit. He can't hang with it. He, he, he wishes he could just play it casually, but he knows he'll be sitting down for six, eight, 12 hours instead of running his podcast or living his life. This is something I'm addicted to. I need to step away from it. Tons of props, tons of respect for that. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And that is a good take that I agree with when it comes to video games. But a lot of times you hear these, these misled, just, just blind notions about video games that it's a waste of time. The people that play video games are stupid, which I would argue that most gamers are pretty intelligent folk. I mean, you have to have a big old brain to be subscribed to this channel. Probably got a 200 IQ hitting that notification bell too. Probably won a Nobel Prize if you shared the video too. And that video games cause violence in the community. That's been debunked several times. They've done studies on youths who play Grand Theft Auto, Saints Row, other violent video games. And there was literally no, they did, they did like MRI scans on their brains and whatnot. There was no neurological connection between them watching violent images on the screen and them wanting to pick up a Glock and go shoot up a school. Completely unrelated. Now, I want you guys to treat this channel, Gamer Heaven, as an open forum, a think tank with like-minded individuals with a common interest in this case. In this case, video games and our passion and love of video games, the industry and the community. So speaking of community, you stallions and stallionettes watching, jump down there. Not Don't jump too high. You might sprain your ankle or something, but, you know, casually hop or leap down there into the uh, comment section down below. That is your guys' section. I do interact with you guys on the daily. We'll get a forum going on, a conversation about our guy, our, our, our <laughs> use guys. Guys, our, our guys' opinions of uh, the neurological effects, video game addiction, this whole topic in general, because I would love to hear your guys' takes on it. 
That is going to do it, guys. If you like the video, shoving your thumb, not up your butt, guys, come on, but on the like button, that helps the video to be seen by more people by tickling the prostate of the YouTube algorithm, which is a very, very sensitive hole. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as honest product reviews in the tech space and tutorials helping you guys, like you literally, I'm looking right at you, right in your brown eye, right in the chocolate starfish, helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing so you can do what I'm doing because I got two brain cells and I'm able to start a successful YouTube channel. So by the way, quick sidebar, I'm going to run the uh, in screen and, you know, get you guys out of here in a minute. I know you got things to do. We just talked about not being addicted to video games. You don't want to be addicted to your favorite YouTuber either. But the channel gained 1000 subscribers in the last seven days. That's some big growth there, boys. <laughs> she's she's a grower, not a shower. She's a grower. That is going to do it, Stallions. I'll see you guys trotting around in the stable, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.